Hi guys. Today I'm going to do the secrets of learning how to heal from dissociative identity disorder. <laughs> um, there are five components and four stages of healing for DID. Um, and this is up to date. Um, it was posted on September 12, 2021. So here we go. The healing journey for dissociative identity disorder is often long and fraught with danger. In many ways, healing from this developmental disorder is like going to war on the battlefield. Only the enemy is yourselves. This article will focus on healing from dissociative identity disorder and the four stages that take place to accomplish it successfully. A well-trained trauma-informed therapist will put themselves into the shoes of their client, <clears throat> allowing them to understand on a deep level the emotions and thought processes that are brought to their office. The therapist will show appropriate emotions such as weeping with their client. This allows their client to be genuine and show emotions concerning the feelings they may have on the subject. This is a clear signal that the therapist is genuinely listening and paying attention to the client's needs. This is a very powerful tool and necessary component if the client is to experience healing. The five stages to this process is orientation, introduction, commitment, working, and resolution. Orientation is a component where the beginning of trust is established. The client identifies why they have gone to a therapist and a rapport between the client and therapist has begun. Orientation begins with the client with the client making the first appointment, not really knowing what to expect from their new therapist. Introduction is the as the title suggests, this is the component where the client and therapist generally begin to get to know one another. It is crucial for the client to feel free to ask questions of the therapist and for the therapist to establish clearly defined boundaries as to what they will and will not disclose. Boundaries. It is during this component that goals are discussed. The well-trained therapist will not push their own goals onto the person seeking their help, but instead will follow the lead of the client filling a parental role. I said that one before. <laughs> Commitment, here the client commits themselves to the healing process and the therapist commits themselves to, the, to aid their client in every way they can. Both parties must make this commitment so the client can make progress. This commitment may be for a short time or may take several, several years. It depends on the needs of the client and the speed of which they tolerate proceeding and the trauma they need to process. Working. This component is where trust has been established and the hard work begins. The client begins to share the deep needs they have and they feel that their therapist is on their side. Trust is earned. This component may include telling the therapist some really dark secrets that the client has never shared with anyone before. The therapist aids their client by not giving advice, but rather by offering different points of views or choices to lead and help that situation. The therapist's goal is to help their client understand and change ways they may be incorrectly seeing the world. Once this is established, resolution is next. In this final component of therapy, the client has decided that they have met the desired goal, reasons they entered therapy, and it's time to leave or move on. Although this is a positive outcome, because of the intimate nature of the therapeutic relationship, the experience of fear of abandonment in the part of the client is natural and must be understood. The strong emotion of abandonment can be elevated by careful preparation. This involves talking about the impending loss of the therapist in the client's life, as well as recounting of the positive changes that have occurred during this time the client and therapist have had together. Now that we have established the five components of therapy, we should examine together the four stages of actual healing from dissociative identity disorder. Although I have defined them stages, the following are actually changes in behavior and think pa thinking patterns that 
that one gain from trauma-informed care. These four categories are, or four stages are, discovery, chaos, and cooperation and fusion. Discovery is the stages involving discovering that something is wrong. You may have known all your life that these things were different for you than other people, but until you are ready, the memories of what happened remain deeply buried. Perhaps it was for the anxiety purposes that these memories were buried. The therapist must work through these and discover them. Chaos. During your time waiting for the proper diagnosis and years afterwards, you enter a time in the healing where there's things that are chaotic. The altars have become bolder and more assertive in your life, and you are literally fighting for your life. You spent your time thinking about your diagnosis and immersed in the discovery what happened to you to cause you to form DID. In this stage, some personal growth happens, but not much. Some people get stuck in the chaos stage and never find their way out. This is a unique and special area that needs to be addressed. Cooperation. Cooperation I am speaking of internally among the different altars. First, one must learn to coexist with the others. These parts are not strangers threatening to take over the body. They are fragments of yourself looking for love, safety, and a parent parental role. When you begin to treat them with respect and dignity they deserve, they will begin to become conscious where they are aware of each other and move towards healing and their behaviors will be healed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Fusion. Since the I word integration frightens people, I have chosen the word fusion because it is better described in the end resulting of working on issues related to dissociative identity disorder. Fusion does not, nor could it ever mean the death of an altar. That is impossible. Fusion is more of a cooperation and an understanding of one another. Reaching fusion can take many, many years. It should never be rushed. Always keep in mind that your altars are you and you are them. Only one person is reading this piece. One person who pers whose personality never merged into one cohesive self. Working with the therapist to heal from DID is an adorous task. Healing isn't something you can go to a therapist once and accomplish. It takes many decades. While the above statement is true, one must also remember that you have your entire life to dedicate to understanding and learning and getting to know yourself better. This is your goal. There is no aha moment in DID healing where you suddenly can yell, I'm cured. Instead, healing comes in small steps that lead to a better life. Once the chaos has passed and the beginning of healing starts, life settles into a routine where you will be capable of taking your own time to live, and hence getting to know yourself. In other words, healing from dissociative identity disorder is a horrendous adventure where you can come to know yourself better than most ever will. I think that was really great, and I hope you learned something from it, and you're welcome to share this and share it with your therapist. Loves. Bye.